Welcome to MidwestSports.net, and with me today on the summit is the coach of the Nebraska Kearney Lopers, Coach Rick Squires. And Coach, uh, your team comes off a fantastic win in the final of the Central Region as you will move on to play in the Elite Eight in Denver a little bit later on this week. You take on Concordia St. Paul, a team that is a perennial power with uh, just multiple national championships, but you got to do it at home. Did that make a difference in rallying like you did for a fifth set victory? No question that uh, if that match was played anywhere else, um, it would have been, you know, all but impossible to come from behind like we did. And that's one of the things about our place and our fans and the energy that's here is I think it creates a feeling for our players that you're never out of it. And uh, that was definitely exemplified by what happened on Saturday. Coach, it, it's been a, a fantastic season to this point. 36-0 and on the year, number two ranking nationally in, in NCAA Division II. And, and you've been able to take care of business, you know, night in and night out. There were two or three five-set matches, but this one was a big one, and again, playing really – in in this uh, Sweet 16 round, if you will, against a, a team like Concordia St. Paul, and finding yourself down big in the fourth set and then down uh, three or four points numerous times in that fifth set. Can you talk about uh, then the players and, and how they rallied to, to get back in it? Well, I mean, first of all, all the credit to them. I mean, I, I can't think of another comeback I've been a part of or even watched necessarily that was anything like that. So um, our girls just uh, refused to quit playing. And as it got a little closer, then they really started to believe that they could do this thing. Um, as I've had a few days now to kind of think it through and soak it in, I, I you know, I really think what kind of happened was uh, you get to a point in a situation like that where, you just you almost quit worrying about winning because it doesn't look like you're going to win <laughs> and so you just kind of get back to playing and so they just kind of said let's just go play and however it turns out let's make sure we walk off here knowing that that we didn't give up and we played hard and we played well at the end and then when it starts to turn uh, because you are playing better uh, then for, for this group to be able to reach down and, and pull that off against a team like Concordia uh, is about as amazing as it gets. Coach, you've been the, the head coach there in Kearney now. This is the 21st season and now 21 consecutive NCAA tournament appearances. Clearly you've had a number of good teams along the way to get to that point as you were talking about the players. Let's talk about a few of them individually then as you, as you move on, getting ready to uh, take on Gannon in Denver a little bit later on this week. The co-player of the year in the MIAA and Julianne Jackson uh, having better than three kills per set and and obviously as she was instrumental during this past week in the central regional tournament yeah i mean they just they don't come along like julianne jackson very often and, and the thing about her is um you know she's been a really solid player for us up to the this year i mean somewhat unheralded coming in semi-recruited you know even by us uh, but her work ethic, her desire, her willingness to learn and get better, uh, and then her ability to take a huge jump from her junior to her senior year, just from a mental, physical, and leadership standpoint, uh, has been you know one of the most amazing things I've seen. I mean, she's just a fantastic person, a great competitor, and this year especially she's been uh, willing to take on all the tough moments when we need a kill she'll take a swing when we need a pass she'll pass half the court when we need a defensive play and then obviously at the end of the concordia match she gets a solo block the fourth of the night um which surprised nobody on our roster <laughs> because she's been doing it all year and uh, could not be happier for her she should be a first-team All-American, but, you know, the way that system works uh, doesn't always turn out that way. But to us, she's she's a first-team All-American and as good as it gets for our program. I understand. Speaking now with Coach Rick Squires from the 
Nebraska Kearney Lopers. And Coach, uh, that name I know familiar to everyone in Kearney, but uh, as uh, uh, your family has been a part of the community and, and actually uh, then uh, playing there at, uh, at Kearney Catholic, then you have a couple of, of daughters that have played, more than more than two daughters, three daughters that have played there in, at the uh, the university and now to a part of this team. So I know that everything you're doing now is even that much more close to home. Uh, I'd like to talk even about what Maddie Squires has done in directing traffic at nearly 11 assists per contest or per set, excuse me, and uh, she's now crossed the 1,300 assist plateau for the season, a stellar year for her as well. Yeah, I mean, it, things could not have gone any better than, than we expected for Maddie. I mean, um, you know, going back to the to the beginning with her, I was not smart enough to recruit her coming out of high school. <laughs> she very quickly, uh, you know, made that clear in her two years at Bellevue University. And then, uh, you know, as things kind of unfolded and she talked about coming back and the timing looked a little bit better, um, we got to have her in the program as a red shirt. And so she ran our second side and then kind of took things over in the spring last year. And that's been really inter- instrumental uh, for us to have a fourth year setter. Uh, when you have that setter transition, and, and we had a good one in Lindsey Smith before, but a lot of times it's a freshman or a sophomore with not without a lot of experience. Well, Maddie's had a ton of experience, great training uh, coming all the way through the high school ranks and on over to Bellevue, and then familiarity with the program. And so she kind of hit the ground running, knew the players, knew the girls, always wanted to be a loper and uh, so i'm really happy for her she's had a great year and she's a warrior out there and so uh i I do try to appreciate that because i know um first of all i almost screwed it up uh as it started (laughs) but uh you know to to have a couple daughters along the way and having done it before too with our oldest um it makes it a little bit more special and so uh we'll try to appreciate that fact because uh It is kind of rare, and and, uh, it's been fun to have this kind of a season with them on board. Coach, uh, there are so many seniors and juniors that are a big part of of what you're doing right now, and I know that uh, you've been able to recruit well to to bring in uh, fresh faces that that this success that, that you had and have right now will continue into the future. Another Lindsay, Lindsay Nottleman, as a, a sophomore, uh, really doing her part uh, in taking care of the defense with uh, better than five digs per set. It's not just her, though. I mean, we talked about Jackson. We talked about Maddie and, and uh, M.K. Wolf as well, uh, able to get in and, and provide some good defense. You've been able to frustrate a lot of people by keeping the ball in play. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of been our M.O. at least for the last few years, and, and this team has definitely taken that on and maybe taken it to another level. Uh, you mentioned Lindsey Nottleman. That that was a position that uh, was played by an All-American last year in Ellie McDonald. And so you come into this year and you're not, you know, not 100% sure whether, uh, you know, you've got the, the same level of play, but, but Lindsey very quickly – demonstrated that uh, we were going to have a, a really good libero again uh you know clearly mk wolf uh coming from a great volleyball family there as well her sister being a national player of the year for us uh and mk is just kind of one of those baller types that sees things happening and she's got good length and so she makes a ton of defensive plays and, and is also a good offensive player for us but our our whole team just buys into play to the whistle um and you know some of them have just played so much now that uh you know they do those things that sometimes happen when the game slows down for you they they see things developing and so uh that's why it's always nice to have some veterans out there because uh, they've been through some of that other stuff and they can capitalize on their experience and i think that's been part of the reason we've been good this year Coach, one last question before before we talk about Gannon and, and wrap our time up. And again, thank you very much for the time today. You talked about Ellie and the great player that she was last year and what she did on the court and the, and the numbers that she put up just last year alone. How nice is it to have her then as a part of your staff this year? Yeah, I mean, she's uh, she's somebody that we've been trying to recruit to the coaching profession for you know a few <laughs> years because she does see all kinds of things um, and. Uh, you know, I can see her in practice and, and during matches 
talking with uh, clearly the back row players, but not only that, I mean, she's, she's confident enough in herself to go talk to a middle about something if she needs to. And she, <laughs> she has that player's perspective from uh, here's what I'm seeing. And, and I, I think she looks at different things than I look at. And so it's nice to have her set of eyes out there. The team respects her. They know how hard she played and how hard she worked. And uh, so, you know, it's definitely been a team effort from our staff to, uh, you know, all the players that, that returned and, and are newcomers. And so it's been fun to be a part of. Coach, I know you're going to head out toward Denver here pretty quickly. And so, again, uh, you're going to be facing Gannon in the Elite Eight, a program from Pennsylvania, the Golden Knights, who are perennially powerful out there as well. Talk about this matchup, the first time these two programs have met. Yeah, I mean, I've spent – pretty much all morning kind of digging into their game films and uh, we know that they uh, won a quarterfinal match a couple years ago against Regis Um, the more I watch them the better they look I mean they (laughs) they are in a lot of ways uh, similar to us they're balanced Uh, they can probe your defense and find something that will work with their offense Uh, they have a confident veteran team that plays really hard on defense so they they create all kinds of challenges for us they they run their hitters inside to the middle part of the net a lot they just lay it up there they're smart um it it will be a back and forth match uh that uh i think you have to try to you know get one here and get one there it's it's not going to be i wouldn't expect anyway a match where you're going to expect to get five six seven points in a row because uh, they just have too many weapons. So uh, big challenge for us. We'll have to play extremely well if we want to be moving on to the next round. All right. Well, that national quarterfinal match with Gannon will take place on Thursday, 3.30 Central Time. Uh, for those watching here in the Midwest, Coach Rick Squires, thank you again t- for taking time with us today here on the Summit. And success to you all, not only through the remainder of this season and, and hopefully in, in uh, possibly bringing home a national championship, but uh, throughout uh, at your tenure and your time there in Kearney. And, and God bless you, sir. Thank you. Hey, appreciate you having me on. This has been the Summit on MidwestSports.net. Be sure and like and share this video and subscribe to our channel. We would appreciate that greatly. In the meantime, God bless you and have a great day.